Greetings, dear listeners. Hope you're all doing well. We're out here tonight to welcome the arrival of the full wolf's moon. The full wolf's moon of January the 6th, 2023. January the 6th, the birthday of Sherlock Holmes. That's right. Sherlock Holmes is 169 years old today. But don't worry. I'm not going to sing. That would really be a crime. But this time we're going to do something a little different. We're going to use the arrival of the full wolf's moon as an opportunity to explore three historic books about werewolves. Three historic works on werewolves. So you might want to regard tonight's video as a short teaser for my upcoming upload on three historic books about werewolves. We'd make it a longer video tonight, but it's too cold! But we know, you really want to see the full wolf's moon. So I'm going to ask the lovely and talented camera crew, who's slowly freezing to death here, to give us a panorama shot of tonight's full wolf's moon the first full moon of 2023, as well as our wintry landscape. So, stay tuned for my upload on three historic books about werewolves. And until midnight, stay warm and cheers. Greetings, dear listeners. Hope you're all doing well. We're out here tonight to welcome the arrival of the full wolf's moon. The full wolf's moon of January the 6th, 2023. Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to Three Werewolf Classics. Now, like most people, I learned all that I knew about werewolves from the movies, specifically the Universal Wolfman movies starring Lon Chaney Jr., The Wolfman, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, The House of Frankenstein, The House of Dracula, and Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. In those five movies, I learned that one became a werewolf by being bitten by another werewolf who passed on the affliction, like rabies, I guess. In Lon's case, he became a werewolf after being bitten by Bella Lugosi. <laughs> Yikes! Lon turned into the wolfman on nights of the full moon when he would be transformed into a hairy, two-legged beast roaming the darkness to kill. Lon's wolfman, known as Larry Talbot, could tell potential victims when he saw the sign of the pentagram on the palm of their hand, and he could only be destroyed by a silver bullet, <laughs> not Kerr's light, or by getting his head bashed in by a cane with a silver top. And, of course, there was that famous poem. Even a man who is pure at heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Thus, everything I knew about werewolves I'd learned from scriptwriter Kurt Siodmak. You can imagine my shock when, 
visiting the library and consulting a number of historical works on werewolves, I discovered A. The werewolf was connected to witchcraft and B. Many individuals became werewolves voluntarily. In this video, I'm going to briefly discuss three classic books about werewolves. The three titles are The Book of Werewolves by the Reverend Sabine Baring Gould, Werewolves by Elliot O'Donnell, and The Werewolf in Lore and Legend by Montague Summers. Sabine Baring Gould was one of those prolific Victorians. The Wikipedia article about him describes him as, quote, an Anglican priest, heliographer, antiquarian, novelist, folk song collector, and eclectic scholar. His bibliography consists of more than 1,240 publications, though this list continues to grow. End of quote. Today he is mainly remembered for his hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers. Baring Gould lived from 1834 to 1924 with The Book of Werewolves, an account of a terrible superstition, appearing in 1865. In his preface, Baring Gould states, quote, This book is a monograph on a peculiar form of popular superstition, prevalent among all nations and in all ages, end of quote, and he notes it will cover, quote, several interesting subjects connected with lycanthropy, such as metapsychosis, innate cruelty, hallucination, etc., end of quote. Etc., indeed. The book's introductory chapter opens with an atmospheric account of Baring Gould's first exposure to the werewolf myth. Stranded in the French countryside, the good reverend finds that none of the peasants will escort him back to his hotel for fear of the loup-garou, the loup-garou, the French word for werewolf. He goes on to state, quote, This was my first introduction to werewolves, and the circumstance of finding this superstition still so prevalent first gave me the idea of investigating the history and the habits of these mythical creatures. End of quote. I have already dramatized Baring Gould's encounter with a video I called Werewolves After Dark Lugaru. There's a link to it in the description if you'd care to check it out. In some ways, this introduction is the high point of a dry and scholarly work. The following chapters explores the werewolf myth among the ancient Greeks and Romans, among the Vikings, and during the Middle Ages. Later chapters explore the folklore, mythology, and natural causes namely insanity and serial murder, of lycanthropy. All this exhibits great erudition, but I suspect most readers want accounts of actual werewolf cases. This we get in Chapter 6, a chapter of horrors, followed by a chapter on perhaps the most famous or infamous French werewolf of the medieval period, Jean Grenier. Baring Gould begins this section with an evocative reimagining of an encounter between Grenier and some young shepherd girls, which reads like a creepy and evocative Victorian or Edwardian horror story, and piqued my flagging interest. To me, the most interesting sections of the book are chapters 11 through 13, which explore the case of the infamous Bluebeard, the Marshal Gilles de Ray. If you've never heard of de Ray, 
He was one of the richest, if not the richest men, in France in the mid-1400s. He was also a soldier, a friend of Joan of Arc, an alchemist, and a serial killer, a serial killer who murdered hundreds of children, possibly in connection with witchcraft and black magic. Chapter 11 outlines the investigation of the charges against him. Chapter 12 discusses the trial, while Chapter 13 deals, <laughs> appropriately enough, number 13, with his sentence and execution. Amazingly, de Ray tried, in modern parlance, to cop a plea, to cop a plea and get life in a monastery. Instead, he was hanged and burned. As I noted before, the Book of Werewolves by the Reverend Sabine Baring Gould is, despite some moments of fine and atmospheric writing, far from lively. Still, it's worth a look if you're interested in werewolves, and the author is helpful in giving an outline of the contents of each chapter, so you can easily focus in on just those sections that are of interest to you. A much livelier read is Werewolves by the Anglo-Irish ghost hunter Elliot O'Donnell. O'Donnell differs from Baring Gould in believing some werewolf encounters to be ghostly in nature. O'Donnell explains his various theories at great length and gives detailed information on how to become a werewolf, including the various chants an initiate has to perform, such as... Now repeat after me and see if you become a werewolf. Spirits from the deep who never sleep, be kind to me. Spirits from the grave without a soul to save, be kind to me. Spirits of the trees that grow upon the lees, be kind to me. Spirits of the air, foul and black, not fair, be kind to me. Water spirits hateful, to ships and bathers fateful, be kind to me. Spirits of earthbound dead, that glide with noiseless tread, be kind to me. Spirits of heat and fire, destructive in your ire, be kind to me. Spirits of cold and ice, patrons of crime and vice, be kind to me. Wolves, vampires, satyrs, ghosts, elect of all the devilish hosts, I pray you send hither, send hither, send hither, the great gray shape that makes men shiver, 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 come, come, come. So, did you become a werewolf? Well, if so, let me know in the comments below. Now, getting back to O'Donnell. As a reader, I pick up his books for entertainment value. In fact, I presented a number of O'Donnell stories from this book and some of his other works on my channel. Most recently, my video, Kranz the Werewolf. Now, I can't say these stories are made up. I simply don't know. But if true, they've been heavily fictionalized. Heavily fictionalized, usually to illustrate the paranormal theory under discussion. And <laughs> they're also a lot of fun. O'Donnell takes a geographic approach to the study of lycanthropy with chapters on the werewolf in the British Isles, in France, Germany, Austria-Hungary and the Balkans, Spain, Belgium and the Netherlands, Norway and Sweden, Iceland, Lapland and Finland, Russia and Siberia, with separate sections on vampires and ghouls, and 
on the Maras of Denmark. Our final book is The Werewolf in Lore and Legend by Montague Summers, who believed in the reality of witchcraft, werewolves, and vampires. He was also an expert on restoration drama and, to say the least, a very eccentric man. The book itself is quite an eccentric read and is filled with long sections in Greek, Latin, or French, so I found myself skipping through the text. The best story concerns a Portuguese werewolf, a Labus Homan, a Labus Homan named Joanna, who tricks a farmer into leaving his baby on the side of a mountain under the light of a new moon. And it doesn't end well. No, no, it doesn't end well. No, no, no. Summers also takes a geographic approach to his study of werewolves and concludes with a note on the werewolf in literature and a section on which ointments, which ointments, not which ointments, which ointments by a Dr. H.L. Norman, as Summers believed witchcraft and werewolves to be intimately connected. Since reading these three books, I've come to realize that many non-fiction books about werewolves, good examples being The Werewolf Delusion by Ian Woodward or Werewolves by Daniel Cohen, make use of these three werewolf classics as sources and recycle many of the stories, <laughs> just as I've recycled them on my YouTube channel. Final thoughts? If you want entertainment, read Elliot O'Donnell. If you want something more scholarly, read The Book of Werewolves by Sabine Baring Gould. And if you find this topic extremely interesting, you just might want to dip your toes into Montague Summers' The Werewolf in Lore and Legend. But what do you think, dear listeners? Have you read any of these books? If so, what did you think of them? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Please, and stay safe, stay subscribed, ring the bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and feel free to share this video with anyone you please. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Till midnight. Cheers. The music in today's video was the classic Lightless Dawn, Lightless Dawn, by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod, while the video was taken by Dr. Curious. Okay, just concentrate on these trees behind me.